60 days. So we have exactly 60 days between now and the submission deadline. So uh, hopefully you are currently refining your proposal. Uh, I think you'll find that our protocol is really simple, but if for some reason you don't, you can email me, text me, call me, whatever you like. So we had a, another site tour recently and the video is on our website. I think you'll find these to be very valuable if you don't live in the Bay Area and we're not able to actually take a site tour yourself. So watch the site tour, it's about 45 minutes long. We answer lots of questions, we have shots of the site. There's also a, another site tour we did a couple of months ago. We tried not to be too redundant. So if you watch the two site tours, I think the combination of that will be really valuable to you. So I highly suggest that. I've been getting a lot of questions about editing your submissions. You can edit your submission as many times as you like between now and the submission deadline. So you should not feel any pressure or anxiety when you click the submit button. There's a very specific protocol related to this. It is on, on our website. You can, you can see that. Uh, again, if you need help with it, just let me know. But you have unlimited number of edits that you can do. I'd recommend that instead of doing little edits all the time that you just uh, formulate a bunch of them and do them all at once just to save the, the protocol of having to communicate with us too much but you can, you can edit as many times as you want. Obviously the submission that really matters is the final final. So on April 3rd or shortly before, I'm guessing you will go look at your submission one more time, clean it up, make sure it's exactly what you want. And uh, that's what, what we will see when we have our community competition panel reviewing the submissions. And then finally the jury actually choosing the three finalists and then ultimately choosing the winner. So just a reminder on what the community competition panel is, the community competition panel will be a group, a, a local group of people, architects, artists, community leaders, community activists, people who care about building a, a great place to live uh, here in Silicon Valley in San Jose, and they will get together and they will recommend uh, 50 of their favorite submissions to the jury. But this is really an important point. Whether your submission is recommended to the jury or not by the community competition panel, the jurors will still view your submittal. The jurors will, will view all submittals. We obviously have no way to predict how many submissions we're going to get. We're hoping for lots and lots, but uh, all see all of the members of the jury will see all of the submittals. Just a reminder, this is an open ideas competition. There's no cost. You can submit as many times as you want, as long as each submission is coming from a different email address. So if you have lots of ideas, you can even get some more free email addresses just for the purpose of doing more submittals. The open part means anyone is welcome, whether you're a professional or an amateur, a beginner or a career designer. And remember, very important that this first this phase one submission you're making, it's an idea. It is not a plan set. I've been getting lots of questions, particularly from architects, about wanting lots of digital tools to give us very, very sophisticated, refined plans. That is not what we need. It's an idea. When you look at the design presentation board, you'll see that the requirements are very simple. So you're trying to inspire the community competition panel and more importantly, the jury with your, design, with your uh, idea that's on the board. So use the space in a way that inspires. Uh, I think I would recommend avoiding lots of tiny little images. You want, you want a grand idea. You want uh, inspiration and a, a, a moment of uh, aha to happen for the jurors when they look at your idea. Here briefly is our schedule for the next six months or so. Submission deadlines April 3rd. Again, notice the 11 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, please don't be late. In fact, I'd highly recommend not waiting until the last day just in case you do have some kind of a challenge. So I recommend a couple days in advance, cleaning up your submission, getting it completely finished, and uh, uh, being, being, being done with it. The community, community competition panel, again, recommends top 50 ideas. That's on the 18th and 19th of April. 
We will have a public display of the 50 semifinalists. Um, uh, they are not semifinalists. That's actually a typo, which I'm going to fix today. They are 50 recommended ideas. They are not semifinalists. So uh, I apologize for this typo that I have in here. Uh, the word should be 50 recommended designs. We will, we will fix that on the, anywhere it appears today, but that will be approximately from April 26th to May 2nd. Also, all of the submissions will be available online for the public to look at. And then the key moment is really the jury selection of three finalists on May 4th and May 5th. And then finally in July or August, uh, depending on how long it takes us to get through phase two, which is when we have three finalists, the winner will be announced. So phase one again, following the submission deadline, entries will be displayed online. All submissions are anonymous. It's really important, remember it's all anonymous. Everyone is, uh, has an equal chance. We will assign a submission number, but that number doesn't matter to you. When you go on submittable, uh, you'll, you'll be in your own file, so you don't need to be concerned about the submission number. But on the design presentation boards, there are squares in the upper right-hand corner that you leave blank. That's simply so that we can put the number in there for when we print the boards. Then in, in step two, uh, the, in phase one, step two, the community competition panel will review entries. They'll recommend up to 50 to the jury. Comment will be shared with the panel and the jury. By submitting an entry, you agree to the public display of your submission. And then finally, in phase three, the jury will select the three finalists. Then in phase two, the three finalists each receive $150,000 stipend. And that's to be used to refine proposals. So again, as I was saying earlier, don't feel pressure to have a huge amount of detail in your phase one idea. That will happen in phase two. And then during phase two, submitters will meet with us, our organization, and also people from the city of San Jose who owns the park. And we'll together, we will refine your, your submission, that is, of the three finalists. And finally, in the summer, the three finalists will make presentations when they're finished refining their proposals to the They'll do that to the jury and a single winner will be selected and then we'll be into the pre-construction phase and then finally in the, into the construction phase. We're really thrilled with our jury. A lot of real A-list people from around the country and around the world. You can see this online and look at uh, the specific jurors along with some brief information about them. And again, a reminder, they will have no contact with submitters at any time. So. Uh, if for some reason you should see one of these people, you shouldn't talk to them. We've intentionally kept them away from any events that we do that submitters attend because again, anonymity is critical and we want everyone to have an equal chance. As I mentioned earlier, there will be three $150,000 stipends that will be given to those three finalists to refine proposals. Just a reminder that the, for, for purposes of this phase, phase one, you should use 200 feet as the height limit, even though the actual height limits are slightly higher on the site. We don't think any of them will uh, dramatically change the way that you might have your uh, design presentation board. So just remember that there'll be, there'll be slight increases that we'll deal with, deal with in phase two, but for purposes of phase one, use a 200 foot height limit. In order to submit, you have to create a uh, submittable account. It's very simple and it's on our website. If you just put in uh, that you wanna submit, it'll take you to submittable. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. And then there's, there, there are forms. The, the uh, format on submittable is very much self-explanatory. Once you get in there, I think you'll see that uh, anybody can do this, just uh, color by numbers. And the resources for submitters on our website are very important. You'll notice here on the screen that, that there are required resources for submitters. That means you need, you need to look at these and read these. There'll be a point where you'll have to check a box that says that you looked at this. So please look at them. It will only help you in creating a, an excellent submission. We've had quite a bit of media coverage that we're proud of. Also, we were selected as one of Bustler's top 10 competitions for 2019. And uh, we think we're doing imp very important work that's going to make the world a better place. And we'd love to have you as our partner here. 
and then please submit your questions in the Q&A section of this webinar. So I'm hoping all of you are submitting questions. And I will spend the rest of this webinar answering your questions. Everyone, please submit your questions in the Q&A section and they'll be answered uh, in the order that they come in. Thank you. And a reminder that if for some reason your, some of your questions don't get answered during this webinar, I will not ignore your questions. I will get back to you. The, uh, I know everyone has lots of questions. Another reminder is that if you read the FAQ section on the website, there are many, many questions. I know it takes a, a bit of time to read them, but I recommend that you do so because uh, most of the questions that you will come up with likely will have already been asked by someone else. So uh, first question is, can mock-ups be hand-drawn? The answer is certainly yes. Uh, again, we're looking for an inspirational idea, a big idea. So hand-drawn is fine or uh, generated digitally, that's also fine. Can you show a sa sample, forgive me, just getting organized here, looking at all of your questions. When doing the presentations, do we have to use the two boards or can we use just one? Uh, you must use two. So after a lot of discussion with submitters, we added this second board because we wanted to give you adequate space to, um, to express your idea. So you've got two boards, so please use them. How many floors are we able to build underground? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, what I would say is use practical knowledge and uh, common sense to make a submission. We haven't done engineering on the entire site yet, and in particular on the civil side. We don't know where the water table is precisely. So if you put something that goes underground, uh, knowing that we can't know yet how deep to go, you won't be disqualified for that. Yeah. Uh, in phase one, you want to think large and come up with fabulous ideas. Then in phase two, we would end up determining how deep one can actually go and the practical aspects of that. But remember that the jurors are going to be looking at your competition from the, um, excuse me, at your submission from the perspective of buildability. So if you put something that was a thousand feet underground, uh, the, the jurors would probably say this isn't practical, it can't be done. So I would recommend against that, but just be, be practical and use common sense. Can you show a sample of a design board? It looks like there was previously a template, but the latest one I saw appeared blank on the screen. Yeah, we had a we had a template that we had presented, but we didn't like it, so we took it down. Uh, but yes, we will we will post a, a simple example of a design presentation board. But you need to know that there's complete flexibility there. You can literally put anything you want on there as long as you follow the really basic constraints that are unsubmittable. $150,000 stipend will, will be given to the three finalists once they are designated, or will they be given once they have submitted their refined projects? Uh, very good question. Uh, our intention would be to receive the work from the three finalists before the stipends are paid, but we recognize that there's potential there for hardship, and we will be reasonable and supportive in how that money is distributed. Can you speak to any sustainability goals? I have seen a few of the comments on the website, but it is always better to hear firsthand. We are asking for net zero, which is pretty basic, might even be in code in, in many places now in at least California. 
and I would say more sustainability is better than less, and sustainability takes many forms. So having the project be as sustainable as possible is, is a logical goal. Will all the boards submitted in phase one be printed for review by the juries, or will they just review the boards digitally? Very good question. Only the boards of the 50 recommended submissions by the, C by the community competition panel will be printed on boards and the rest of them will only be seen digitally. So the jury will see 100 boards, which is two boards each from the 50 recommended submissions and everything else will be digital. Do public comments on the submissions online influence the jury? Very good question. Those uh, you know, jurors will be able to see those because they're, they're part of the public like anybody. What influence it might have, I can't predict. These are professional people who understand that they've got a really important task in front of them and they'll, they'll take it very seriously. So uh, if the concern is with some uh, comments that are inappropriate, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, these, are, these are people who in many cases have spent a career either designing things, building things, or uh, in the industry of creating beautiful things. So I, I don't expect them to be improperly swayed by anyone's comments. What is the expected budget of the final project? We intentionally have no cap at this point. So let your creative juices flow and um, we will deal with issues related to budget later if there are any. So we intentionally have no maximum budget right now. With regard to the presentation boards, is it possible to use both boards to display one image? Meaning, could we mark north, south, east, and west in order to explain the orientation? Certainly, you can use the two boards any way you want. Do notice, though, that one thing that needs to be included there is the, uh, the site map image, which you'll see on submittable. But you can make that any size you want on your boards. So yes, you can use those two boards any way you like. Before submitting the project until April 3rd, do we have to register in advance in order to obtain the submission number? Uh, no, you could, you could uh, in theory, you could register and submit on April 3rd and do nothing in advance. <clears throat> I think that's a really bad idea, <clears throat> excuse me, because if you ended up with any issues, you'd want to have time to deal with them and that time could be used to call me, email me, uh, ask submittable technical questions, et cetera. But once you register, you can immediately submit. So there is no delay necessary there. In terms of form or construction, how dense should the design be? Is it favored to be lightweight or, imp or imposing? We don't favor any kind of design. Uh, we've been very clear that your, your idea can be architectural, it could be artistic, it could be sculptural, it could be water, it could be wind, it can be anything. So we have, we're not prescriptive in any way about being lightweight versus being imposing. I'd say what we're looking for is something spectacular, but that could take many forms. As you all know, if you looked at the great physical monuments or, or placemaking uh, successes around the world, they take all different forms. And uh, we want you to be thinking outside the box and doing something that's site specific and spectacular. Of the $1.5 million currently raised by Urban Confluence, Urban Confluence Silicon Valley, would any of it be going toward the actual competition operation or is it being reserved distributed toward the jury and future projects? The money we've raised has been used to do everything necessary to get through phase one and phase two. So part of it is the $450,000 used for the three stipends. Part of it is to pay me as the uh, executive director. And much of it has been spent on advertising and consultants and experts who are required to successfully run a competition like this, which is probably a bit more complicated than many people might think. Should, can we use company names, names of designers uh, or of items that we are planning to incorporate into our design or would that compromise anonymity? 
you are not allowed to use anything on your boards or in your narratives that would mention company names, names of designers, or anything that would identify you. Uh, that's very important. Again, we have been scrupulous uh, about anonymity and uh, don't, don't do anything that would ever reveal who it is who's, who's designing the submission. Can the site connect to the water across the road? I'm not sure what the questioner is referring to, but we've had many questions about bridges or structures or uh, designs that cross the riparian corridor from Arena Green West to East, and that is acceptable. I'm not sure if that's what the questioner means, but you can, you can do things that go from the West to the East. Uh, that's completely acceptable, whether it's bridge, bridges or, or other designs. Are there any specific spaces the structure needs to accommodate, such as a meeting space, gift shop, etc.? No, but when you read the brief, you'll see that activation strategies of the site are, are uh, encouraged. You don't have to put in lots of activation strategies, but you could. So if you wanted to put in a, a gift shop, or a meeting space, or a restaurant, or a bar, or a coffee house, or, or anything else, you can certainly do that. And please remember, you don't have to design those buildings. It, that could be as simple as mentioning in the narrative and on, on the site map image, putting a note or putting a, a box that in scale or close to scale represents your vision. Because remember, the, you know, this is a visioning part of the competition. You mentioned the stipend will not be given until the completion of phase two. We need the stipend to complete phase two. This is a big change. Please clarify. We haven't precisely explained exactly when the stipend will be paid. I want to re reiterate to everyone, we are going to be reasonable with distribution of the stipend. We are not going to put any of you in an awkward position related to using the stipend to uh, pay anybody who needs to be paid to help develop. So um, if I've been confusing, I don't mean to. Uh, there is no big change here. Uh, we, we will, uh, I'll make a note to do a better job of explaining the stipend payment, but the stipend will be paid in a way that is completely acceptable to the three finalists and works for your schedule and your financial situation. If the idea behind the design is stronger than the design itself, would it still be chosen? Also, is there room for feedback and adjustments if it moves into the top 50? So just uh, as far as the top 50 is concerned, no, there will, be, there will be no modifications during the phase when we have the, the 50 recommended designs by the community competition panel. Your, 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 your submission will not change there. The, the, the question about if the idea is stronger than the design itself, would it still be chosen is a good question. I, I, I guess what I would say to that is imagine yourself as a juror and how you would react uh, uh, to something where the design is, uh, the idea is stronger than the design. So the jury is clearly going to have to finesse this entire process and uh, they're, they're looking at the big picture. So um, all I can say is that the jurors are very smart people who, who understand building and, and uh, inspiration, and they're going to have to, in real time, decide how to deal with each submission. So try to make the submission as clear as you can so that it, it allows them to make an, uh, a good decision and, and fully appreciate whatever it is that you've designed. Can the project or proposal have more than one program, like a cafe or a gymnasium? I think I already answered that. The answer is yes, it could have virtually anything, with practical limitations, of course. For visual artists who don't fully understand architecture or landscaping, uh, will, will that affect their chance of being chosen? No, we, we've clearly said that in phase two, these details related to architecture, civil engineering, structural engineering, et cetera, will be dealt with. So if you're an artist who has no understanding of architecture, that's, that's acceptable. Uh, you, 
again, your, your submission is a, is a vision. It's a, it's a grand idea. So in phase two, we would help you find professionals who can fill in the gaps insofar as you, there are aspects that you don't know how to do. I hope that's a clear answer because it's a very important one. We've always encouraged people with varying levels of skill and expertise to be able to submit. It, it, it is, we, we don't simply want professional architects to submit. Everyone's welcome to submit. Why was Arena Green chosen as the site to propose such a landmark? We studied seven or eight um, appropriate or possibly appropriate sites in and around downtown San Jose because we are building our project on a public park. So given that we were doing that, the city of San Jose said, study all of these sites before we approve one. So we did that. We spent a lot of money and spent a year working on that and created lots of logical criteria to evaluate the sites and Arena Green came out uh, by far on top. So we're, we're really happy with the choice of Arena Green. It was the largest site. Uh, it's got the riparian corridor, which adds magic. Uh, everyone wants to be near water. Uh, we think this site is a hugely underutilized asset of our community. Uh, it's currently in a state of disrepair. We are working with our parks department of the city and also with the Guadalupe River Park Conservancy as partners to try to improve Arena Green, which is part of the Guadalupe River Park and Gardens. We hope we end up being a catalyst for other development that might similarly be um, a private public partnership uh, in the future. You know, we are raising this money as a nonprofit. We are not asking uh, the city or the conservancy for money. How precise does the submission have to be? Is a philosophical idea with visuals enough? That's a good question. Uh, if your board isn't, doesn't have enough specificity for the juror to understand what you're asking or what you're, what you're submitting, then you've probably not done a good job. So the philosophical explanation is important, but the visuals are very important too. Again, visualize yourself as a juror and how you would react to, to these boards. Uh, and I, I, would, I would say that I think having, having the boards in a way that people react immediately in a positive way and get inspired is an important part of the process for you as a submitter. I would be very tempted to use photographs of my previous work on one of my boards. This could identify me if a juror knew of my work, which is quite possible. I understand and appreciate the need for anonymity, but I would really like to use my previous work to illustrate my idea. How can I resolve this? It's a very good question. Uh, my knee-jerk answer is don't use photos of previous work, but I understand the subtlety here. Uh, I ask this uh, questioner to please send me, send me this question so that I can give um, an answer to everyone and post it in FAQ that will help anyone with a similar question. Is it possible to remove some of the trees and bushes on each side of the river or perhaps redesign the landscape of Arena Green to complement the design? As far as redesigning the landscape, absolutely yes. The whole landscape of Arena Green East and West is something that can be modified. So don't, don't feel any constraints there. But as far as the, the inside of the riparian corridor, there are definitely huge constraints. Uh, you can't modify anything inside of, the, um, of from, from bank to bank of the river and the creek. But in the 100 foot setback, there are probably some minimal changes that would be acceptable to the city. Uh, that's gonna have to be nuanced during phase two, but, uh, but certainly do not offer changes that are inside the banks of the river. Is it allowed to make an extra bridge or any other construction over the river? I already answered that. The answer is certainly yes. If your design is chosen and you aren't local, Will travel be paid for and how long can you expect to be committed to this build if your design is chosen or if your idea is passed off to someone else after phase two? Uh, yes, we do need you to visit. As far as paying for your travel, uh, I'm not certain about that. So I would ask this questioner to send me this question after the fact so I can post a proper answer on, on the FAQ. 
And as far as commitment to build, uh, the questioner asks this in a good way in that, uh, how long will you, if you're the winner, be expected to be engaged? And in theory, you would be engaged throughout the entire process. But if one chose to only be involved to a certain point, then uh, one's involvement might, might be less. Uh, I will answer this in a real objective way. Again, if this questioner would please send this to me as an FAQ so that everyone is clear about this. But it will be necessary during phase two for the three finalists to visit San Jose. When does the organization expect to finish construction of the project? The answer to that is that we don't know. It's going to be completely driven by the design that is ultimately chosen. So after July or August, once this winning design is chosen, we will be in pre-construction for some period of time. Uh, any of you who have built things know it. Uh, there's, a, there's a significant amount of work to be done between when the preliminary design is done and when the, when the uh, project is actually ready to be constructed. So we'll have a reasonable amount of pre-construction and then a reasonable amount of construction based on the actual design that is selected as the winner. Has an environmental report been done on the site? Are there limitations with the wetlands, similar to the landscape design question just asked? An environmental report uh, was likely done on the site 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, which um, I have not personally read. We are certain that an environmental report will be done as part of our project. So when we get the winning design chosen, we will be in that environmental impact report phase, and that will be part of what happens after the winning design is chosen. We have experts on our team in this area, and insofar as any of that is relevant in phase two, we would help the three finalists deal with that. Likely that will all happen in phase three, uh, it, it, excuse me, in phase three, if you want to call phase three after the winning design is chosen. And are there limitations with the wetlands similar to the landscape design questions asked previously? Uh, yes, there are clearly limitations. Uh, we don't refer to them as wetlands. We call it the riparian corridor, but uh, you should read the, the, the study, the biology study, and know that the city, um, which owns the, the park and the water district, which controls the river and the creek, have many, many rules associated with that riparian corridor, and we will, of course, uh, abide by all of them. In the case of a bridge structure, would it be possible to introduce supporting slim columns outside the specific site areas? Uh, no, you do not want to have any of the elements of your design be outside of the specific site areas and the site areas are very clearly defined on the site maps. What is local government's involvement with the project? Uh, the city of San Jose owns the park, so they are our partner. Uh, we meet with them constantly. Uh, we couldn't do any of this without our partners at Parks, Recreation, Neighborhood Services, and, and also the city manager and the city council and the mayor. So we work with them constantly, we keep them updated, and ultimately we, we intend to give this project as a gift to citizens of San Jose and Silicon Valley and the Bay Area and the world. And so we have to work with them constantly because the city council and the mayor will ultimately have to accept the gift. Thus, uh, at every turn, they are our partners and they will be approving things as we move forward. Is the project meant to bring mostly tourists to the area or to be primarily a community space? My answer would be all of the above. Uh, if you look at great landmarks around the world, locals go back constantly because they love them. Uh, regional tourists come, tourists come from around the world. We want all of that to happen. We think our project is gonna be a profound uh, Im improvement to our tourist activity in San Jose and Silicon Valley. 
and uh, also have activation that causes uh, everyone nearby to want to see and see the space, visit the space, and enjoy the space constantly. <clears throat> what if a student design is a finalist? Will they have to find a professional firm to develop the design? Excellent question. That's the whole point of phase two. If a student design or, or an amateur's design is chosen, we will work with that person in phase two when we have the three finalists to have to gather all of the necessary technical professionals to refine the proposal. So students should not feel like they need to use, the, to, to learn to use all kinds of digital tools, et cetera. Those professionals will be added to the team in phase two. <clears throat> Is there local criticism of the project? Is it in, inevitable? And would it be a great benefit to the project to have the design team address these concerns? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we had a bit of local criticism early on from some people in the environmental community. <clears throat> we believe that we did an excellent job of addressing those through our biology and lighting reports we did with experts. We've been very respectful of the environment. Apart from that, we've really had no, no criticism in the, in the community. I would say that virtually everyone that we've met with and talked to believes in our vision to create this, this beautiful landmark for our community. So uh, insofar as there is criticism, we would of course answer it and uh, we don't hide, we're here, we're here for everyone. But we, we believe we're doing something that, that will only make our community better and uh, in, insofar as people want to offer uh, suggestions, we're, we, we, li we listen to everyone. Would you be able to post a list of these questions and your responses after the webinar for those who cannot attend? Um, we are not going to post all of my responses because they'll, they'll be posted where you can hear the audio. So we're not going to type up all of this because we think it would be redundant. Uh, posting a list of the questions. Uh, I, I will consider how we might do that. I think, no, my answer to that is going to be that, that most of these questions have already been answered in FAQ or elsewhere in our materials. Insofar as there are new questions, uh, including the couple that I mentioned earlier where I asked the questioners to send them to me, insofar as they are new questions, we will answer, add them to FAQ. I think you'll all find that if you do spend a little bit of time uh, on our website and on Submittable, in particular on the website, in the resources for submitters and in the FAQ, that the vast majority of your questions and concerns will be answered. So before you spend lots of time sending me questions, uh, as a courtesy, I would ask you to go read those and do it in a quiet place where you can really absorb, uh, absorb the answers because most of them have been answered. There is a large homeless presence in the current site and perimeter. Are there plans to address the homeless situation? This seems critical for the success of, for development of this area of San Jose. The answer is yes, we care about the homeless presence. We, uh, as an organization, don't have a position on homeless issues, but we believe that on our site and elsewhere, uh, respectfully helping these homeless people is extremely important. So we hope that other organizations find solutions to the, the, the homeless challenges that we have. I think you all know this is a problem throughout the country, not just in downtown San Jose. So we hope that the city, county, and others follow best practices and create best practices that, that help these homeless people uh, both to help them and also to make the park a more uh, welcoming place for everyone. How many people are currently registered for the competition? Uh, we have a few thousand uh, people who have uh, expressed interest. We have a few hundred who have begun their submissions and we have approximately 60 completed submittals. So we are really thrilled with the interest around the world. Uh, we've always been told that, uh, that all of you out there in the submission world are going to wait till the last minute, which 
we think it's a bad idea, but it's the nature of the world. But, uh, but again, I would encourage you to submit earlier rather than later, uh, if for no other reason than to know that you've, you've done the submission and you don't have any technical issues with it. As I mentioned earlier, you always have access to the submittable people uh, through, through, through the submittable platform and they can ans answer technical questions and you've always got access to me to answer uh, practical questions just like we're doing right now. Is the RFP with the label revised January 2020 on the top right, the last one? Yes, the, by RFP, the, the questioner is referring to what we call the competition brief. So if you go on the website, uh, you'll see the brief and the brief that says revised January 2020 is the final version of it. And if you've read that, you've read not only the most verse, recent, but the final version of that. If you haven't read that, I highly recommend that you do so. It will answer the, many, many of the questions, especially about the highest level concept of what it is that we're trying to do so that as, you're, as you are creating your submission, you are satisfying what we're asking you to do. You just mentioned that the winner may get some technical help in phase two. Will this technical aid be paid for paid from the $150,000 stipend? Yes, let's just take as an example that you are a student with an idea, but you don't have any technical skills and you need a landscape designer, a civil engineer, and an architect to help you with your ideas. Those would be paid for out of the $150,000 stipend that you were given. After the submission deadline, can our submission be shared on social media? Uh, I have never thought about this question before. Clearly, we do not want anyone to share submissions or anything on social media before the submission deadline. I'm going to say that again. Don't go on social media and try to advertise your design. That would destroy your anonymity. So do not do that. As far as what might happen on social media after April 3rd, uh, clearly we will um, use social media to promote the competition and to promote our project, but how that relates to you sharing submissions, I don't know. I'm going to agree to answer that question later. I'd appreciate it if the questioner would send me this question via email so that I can answer it in FAQ for everyone. The river and, and water areas are very dirty and need considerable cleanup. Are we to assume this will happen? Is including river cleanup okay for the submissions or do we just leave it out because it will be addressed by another group? Excellent question. Part of our mission is to improve the area of the river that runs through our particular site, which is Arena Green. What exactly we will do to deal with these dirty conditions is unclear, but I can tell you that we want our section of the river, or I should say the section of the river at Arena Green to be pristine, to be beautiful, to be welcoming, to be part of a site that is hugely desirable for locals and visitors alike, and that we will work on that. But we have no idea what form that might work, what form that work might take, but we will probably be, probably be working with lots of other concerned citizens and groups to do that. Is two days for public input enough? This has been years in the making and to only give the community two days for input does not seem enough. So the community competition panel will spend two days working together, locked in a room with uh, AV such that they can all be looking together at all of the Submittals, they also in advance will be given a bunch of submissions for them to study. We're not going to ask all of them to study all of the submissions in advance. We'll probably split up the submissions and have each of those 30 or so people on the community competition panel only have to look at a certain number in advance. Uh, we, I, I really agree with the sentiment of this question, which is that, that this is, uh, we've been working at this for years and we've got to do it right. But 
uh, trust us that we will make sure that the community competition panel has adequate time to do their work. Why was the competition deadline extended? The answer to this one's simple. Many, many of you asked us to extend it. Our first deadline was in October, then in January, and now in April. We will not be extending it again, but uh, we, we came to the conclusion that October wasn't enough time, and then uh, January ended up being right after the holidays. And uh, again, many of you creatives said, please give us more time. We did so. As it turns out now, we think there's plenty of time for everyone to get to the finish line and create fabulous submissions. You already mentioned the possibility of landscape being modified, but related to all existing trees, is there a constraint to keep as much of the tree area as possible? No, uh, what I would say to you is uh, any of the trees can be removed if that happens, we will end up replacing them either on-site or off-site. We will do that respectfully with the city. The city will, city will have rules about some ratio that is to be determined of two to one, three to one, four to one for each tree that's removed. We will add more trees. So if the, if the winning design has lots and lots of trees, we would probably replant all the trees on site. If the winning design doesn't have lots of trees, then we would work with the city to respectfully uh, plant trees somewhere else. We wouldn't have to plant them. We would pay some in lieu of fee that the city would implement and have trees planted. But none of the trees on site are heritage tr trees that cannot be touched. So uh, it, just a little bit of history that might help you all. 30 years ago or so, this area was uh, parking lots and businesses. That is, this is not some kind of an ancient forest. The river obviously has been there for thousands of years, but the areas outside of the river uh, were used car lots not long ago. So the trees are all very young. That's, that's really the point. And heritage trees would be older, very uh, generally very larger, <clears throat> important trees. So we don't have those. Could I place the name of construction <clears throat> on the art board? I don't understand the question. If, if, that, if that means construction company, the answer is no. Uh, so if, if this questioner could ask me through an email, I will try to answer that question um, accurately and intelligently. But again, know that you don't want to have anything identify you. Anonymity is critical. So be conscious of that when you are creating your design presentation board. <clears throat> We are not allowed to touch the trees in the riparian corridor, but can we change the topography of this area for it to be less steep toward the river, for example? No, inside of the riparian corridor, uh, you cannot change the topography. Now, I wanna differentiate here. Be from bank to bank of the river and the creek, clearly nothing can be changed. In the 100 foot setbacks, the city might accept minimal changes, but we don't know that yet. We're going to have to we're going to have to negotiate that during phase two. So, if the city and their uh, their experts, their environmental experts, thought that something, some topography change in the in the hundred foot setbacks actually improved the area, they might accept it. So I know I'm not giving you a definitive answer here but that's because I can't. So uh, again, I go back to re read the biology report, read the lighting report, be respectful of these constraints. And in phase two, we will, we will do our best to support you in all of the details of your design. Will a video of this webinar be posted later? Uh, yes, this webinar will be online very soon, uh, likely in a, in a couple of days. There have been a couple of questions about the two poster boards, but none regarding the 90 second video. I see it as optional in the submission guidelines, but it would be good to hear the intent of this portion of the submission and how it will be used. So the video that is uh, allowed in submittable, you'll see that if you go to do your, your, your submission, is 
not mandatory. So it really is voluntary. You will not be penalized for not having a video. The reason we added that in is that a number of submitters felt really strongly that a video, a short video, would bolster their submit their submission. So that's why we allowed it. But but it is fully optional, and the intent is to help uh, help us and help the jury uh, understand your intent. So you know we live in a digital world now. So for us to ignore video seemed seemed short-sighted to us and that's why we gave you the option to do that but you should not feel pressure to include that i'm finished answering the questions for today i appreciate very much all of you participating i hope that this webinar was helpful to you we will we will uh, continue to support you in any way necessary. As I've said numerous times, I'm extremely available to you anytime. It's, it's my job to help you. We are, we are trying to make the process simple and successful and end up with the most spectacular uh, urban landmark in the world uh, over, the, over the next uh, few years. Um, we're, we're, we're very intent on getting this done and, and, and serious and wanting to help you and getting to the finish line. So please notice that on the screen now uh, is my email address. Uh, you're, you're welcome to contact me anytime. You'll see that email address and my cell phone number all over our website. Uh, we are not difficult to find. So I encourage you to keep communicating. With that, I'll say thank you very much. Good luck with your submission and please keep in touch. Thank you.